Welcome to the Heart of a Viking. These art lessons are taught by Mrs. Minto from the Cape and Lopen School District in Delaware. I hope you have fun, create imaginative works of art, and make sure you share them with someone because, after all, the visual arts are meant to be seen. Nihao Cape Art is, and welcome back to another episode of The Heart of a Viking. As you recall, Legend and I are traveling to Asia this week. So today we are learning about two very cool things, Da Zhong Mao, which means giant pandas, and the art of zentangling. So let's dive right in and learn a little bit about each one. Giant pandas live in the mountains in central China. They like the dense forests with lots of bamboo. Right now, scientists think that there are only around 2,000 pandas living in the wild in China. Most of the pandas that live in captivity also live in China. There are only about 27 other giant pandas that don't live in China. Giant pandas are currently considered critically endangered animals. This means that they could go extinct if they are not protected. A giant panda is actually a black and white bear. That's right, a giant panda is really a bear. Although fairly big, the giant panda isn't really all that giant. It can grow up to about three feet tall and six feet long when standing on all four legs. The female pandas generally are a bit smaller than the males. Giant pandas primarily eat bamboo, but they are carnivores, meaning they do eat some meat. Besides bamboo, they will sometimes eat eggs, other small animals, and plants. Since bamboo doesn't have a lot of nutrition, pandas have to eat a lot of bamboo to stay healthy. As a result, they end up spending most of their day eating. They have giant molars that help them crush up that hard bamboo. Oh my goodness, boys and girls, there's bamboo here. That's the panda's favorite food. Do you think there are any giant pandas in there? I'm going to go check. You start your art project. In the United States, there are currently four zoos that have giant pandas. They include the San Diego Zoo in California, the National Zoo in Washington, D.C., Zoo Atlanta in Georgia, and the Memphis Zoo in Tennessee. Ni hao Cape Artists. So here we are getting ready to make our panda portraits. All right, so a portrait is a picture of a person or an animal and the panda makes a perfect portrait. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're going to be drawing the panda first, adding an interesting background using a color family, and then you'll have the choice whether or not to draw your panda like that and color him in, or use the Zentangle to finish off your panda. All right, so let me put these two guys aside and let's see what we need for our project today. All right, to get started today, we're gonna need a pair of scissors. We'll be needing some um, Sharpie markers or some kind of marker. It could even be a washable marker, that would be okay. If you happen to have the thin Sharpie marker too, you might like to get that out. I just don't have one here. I have a ton at school, but I don't have one at home. So some kind of marker that's black. I'm even going to use this. This is my pen, but it's a black inked pen and I'd like to use that for my Zentangles too. So I have some black ink choices here. So I'm going to put those aside. Next, I'm going to, of course, need a regular pencil. Next, we're going to be needing some colored pencils, and these are for the um, background. We'll be needing one piece of art paper today, and we're actually going to be using this to make two works of art, but one piece of paper to get us started. And then I'm going to be referring to my color wheel. If you don't have one, that's okay. I will let you look at mine. All right, so let's put this aside for just a moment. The first thing that I need to do is divide it in half. And the best way to divide it in half is just to fold it. So I'm going to fold the left side to the right side. Once that's been folded, open it up and use your scissors to cut on that line, cutting this in half. Okay, now as you learned from the video, most Zen Tangle pieces of art are square. Are these square right now? I hope you said no, because what shape are these? 
yep, rectangles. So I need to transform these rectangles into squares. I'm gonna show you my little trick. Right now I only need one, so I'm gonna put this guy aside. All right, so to turn this rectangle into a square, I'm going to bend my paper but not fold it because I don't want a big fold cutting across my piece of art. So I'm going to bend this bottom corner all the way up to here, lining this edge up with the bottom edge that's flat on the table. But I do not want to push this down. I want to leave it rolled like a burrito. And with my regular pencil, I'm going to trace down this edge just like that. Let this open and hopefully there won't be a fold across yours. If there is, no big deal. It's just fine. It just means that yours has a fold, not a problem. Now I'm going to use my scissors to cut on that line. Excellent! So now my big rectangle has become a square, like magic. This little guy is scrap, but I always save those because you never know when you're going to need it. So I'm gonna put him aside, save him for later. All right, so now I'm ready to draw my cute little panda. So to draw my panda, I'm gonna get my regular pencil. I'm going to start with his head. His head is gonna be right up here, and I'm going to use a circle shape. Next, I'm gonna draw his body, and it's gonna be kind of a circle too, maybe a little oval. Next, I'm gonna go into his face right about here, kind of like halfway in the middle of his face here, and I'm going to draw his snout. To draw his snout, I'm going to make an oval that sneaks right here, but I'm going to stop right there, leaving it open at the bottom, because at the bottom, I want to tuck it up and up. Almost has a heart, an upside down heart look, doesn't it? Hmm. Now Sitting on top of that little mark that I just left right there, I am going to make a really wide heart for his little nose. Then under it down here, I'm going to make a letter U for his mouth. Connected to both sides, I'm going to make the black patches of fur that grow right around his eyes. These are not his eyes, it's the black patch of fur. In that, I will put his eyes. Next, I'm going to move up here and make two ears. One, two. Now for some arms. His arms, I'm going to draw a line that goes right down beside his body, just like that, until I get to where I think his elbow should be. Then I'm going to ask him to bend his elbow up towards his mouth. Stop right about there just before I get to his mouth. Make a little scoop a little rounded line. Now I'm going to go back down here and stop right there. This is what I like to call his elbow pit. It's right where his um, forearm touches the top of his arm. It's the little spot right there. Next, I need to erase this part of his body that is under his arm and the part that's going through this side of his hand but I am not going to erase this line. This one has to stay there to show me that his face is separate from his arm. Now the other arm is the same thing except I'm not bending towards his mouth. This time I'm bending towards his tummy. Scoop around and into his elbow pit. But instead of stopping at his elbow, this time I need to show the top part of his arm just like that. And then erase the part of his body that's inside of his arm. Always looking pretty cute. All right, kind of similar for his legs. His legs are gonna start on the side, scoop around until I get about halfway across his body. I wanna make sure I stop about halfway across, right about here. Scoop back, and I'm going to go all the way to the edge. Erase the part of his body that's inside of his leg. Add a couple of cute toes and repeat on the other side. All right, so you notice his toes are kind of 
connected together there. It's like he's sitting crisscross applesauce. All right, now I'm gonna switch to my Sharpie and trace everything. If there are any parts that you feel that this marker is too big to trace, you can switch to your thin marker or your black pen instead. I like to erase the parts of the pencil lines that did not get traced with Sharpie. All right, so before we go any further, let me get my color wheel back out. All right, so on my color wheel, I have a lot going on here. This, this is the regular color wheel. In the corners, I have some color families already pointed out for you. I don't really need these color families today. Today what I need are a group of colors that are right beside each other on the color wheel. So these are called analogous colors, and analogous cover colors are neighbors. So analogous colors are neighbors. So what I wanna do is pick like three or four colors that are kind of like neighbors. So let me bring out a handful of colored pencils here and you can help me pick what set I need to use. All right, so here are all of my colored pencils. I have a black one, I'm gonna put that aside. I don't need that right now. All right, so I love all of these colors. I just went through my box of colored pencils and I found all the colors that I like. And I noticed that some of these colors are not on my color wheel, like this guy. He is not on my color wheel anywhere. This is kind of a turquoisey blue, green kind of color. So if I really want to use him, I have to figure out what color family he came from. So yeah, I'm trying to see which one he's most similar to. Definitely not these guys. Nope, kinda. Wow, he looks a lot like the green. So even though he's not actually like green green, he's more of a turquoisey green, I'm still gonna count him as a green colored pencil. And I have a few others too. They're all a little bit different, but I'm gonna count them all as green. Here's a blue and another blue different, but he's a similar. Here's a yellow, of course. This is kind of a yellow orange color, but he looks more orange. I'm gonna put him in the orange family. And now these two are unique. This one's called Mulberry and this one's called Magenta. They're not anywhere on here. So let's see which one. You know what? I don't think they really fit in either one. I think they kind of go in the middle. I think they would be like a combination of red and purple. So I'm gonna put them right there in the middle. Okay, so now I have to pick a handful of colors, maybe three or four colors that are beside each other. So let's see what I'm going to choose. I think I'll choose this lime green and yellow, that's right beside. Let's see, maybe I'll go this way. Maybe I'll grab a light blue. And I want a dark color to go with this. Those are too far away. They're not really neighbors. Orange is kind of not too close either. So I think I'm gonna go with the dark blue. All right, let's put these guys aside and get out my panda. Okay, so now that I've selected my color choices, my analogous neighboring colors, now I'm going to color the background space however you want. This one, I made quick little slashy lines that changed colors the further away they got. This one, I colored with my colored pencil, changing colors and kind of blending them together. 100% up to you, but there is one rule. I do not want you to draw a picture of anything. I would like for you to keep your background non-objective. That's a great art word to know. It just means that there are no objects. Be careful not to color inside of your panda. Now, when I get close to the edge, I have two choices. One, I could color more slowly so that I don't get any color on the outside onto my tabletop, or I can get a piece of newspaper or a piece of scrap paper. You can even use that little piece of scrap that we cut off when we were making this into a square at the beginning of this project. This way, I don't have to worry so much and I don't have to worry about getting the color on my table. So now I have to make a choice. Am I going to 
color to make it look like a panda that I would see in a zoo, or am I going to zen tangle it? My artists that are going to color using the black colored pencil, you are going to color in the ears, the eyes, the patches around the eyes, the little nose in the inside of the mouth, and the arms and the legs. Now you notice I added a little piece of bamboo to this one. If anybody would like to add a little piece of bamboo, you can. I'll add one to this one just so you can see me draw it. So I would just draw like a rectangle with some little lines some little lines. I'll put a short little piece in this guy's hand. All right, so the little piece of bamboo and it went under his arm right here. That's why I did not draw in that space right there. Okay, so um, yes, you're going to color the ears, the eye patches, the nose, the mouth, the arms, the legs, and I did color my little piece of bamboo. And then you would be all done. Students that are going to make the Zentangles, you are not going to color at all. Instead, you're going to get out your black coloring tools. So maybe your Sharpie, your black ink pen, or if you have a skinny black Sharpie or black marker, um, and you are going to do your Zentangles. <laughs> So now that we have the cutest little panda drawing, you have to decide if you're going to color it realistically or zentangle it. Zentangle? What does that mean? Well, a zentangle is a type of pattern making that fills in your spaces instead of adding color. The creators of Zentangle, Rick Roberts and Maria Thomas, have created a variety of patterns that you see used by people who Zentangle. However, artists are invited to make their own patterns. It's whatever feels right. The Zentangle method is an easy to learn, relaxing, and fun way to create beautiful images drawn using structured patterns. It is typically done on a square paper called a tile using a pencil and a black pen. The small size allows for the work of art to be completed in a relatively short amount of time. The Zen part of it is that it can be very relaxing and meditative. There are many Zen Tangle patterns that are available to be used if you're having trouble thinking of your own. With your grown-up's permission, you can Google search for Zen Tangle patterns and you'll see a ton of ideas to get you started. So Zen tangles, as I mentioned before, are found, you can find lots of different examples of them on the internet, um, or you can make up your own. So I'm gonna try and make up some of my own here as I go along and make Zen tangles in all of the black parts of the panda. So just like the kids that are coloring, I'm gonna start with the ears. And then the eye patches. And the idea with Zentangle is that you just get lost. Your mind gets so relaxed that you just make patterns. It should not be stressful. It should be very, very relaxing. Now in the spaces that are meant to be black, like the ears and the eye patches and the arms here, you should make patterns that look very dark. Doesn't mean you're coloring it in, but when you put many lines next to each other, like I'm doing right now, it makes that area appear dark, even though it's not fully colored in. So when I was looking for patterns to put into these spaces that are meant to be the black fur on my panda, I made sure to find or create patterns that have lots of lines. Centangles should be very neat. There should be, um, every mark that you make should be very purposeful. Think before you do it. You can always pre-draw with pencil first if you want. I usually just jump right in with my Sharpie or my marker or my pen, but you can pre-draw if you want so that you make sure that you don't make a mistake. 
Okay, so now the spaces that I have left are the spaces that traditionally are white on a panda. So I want to plan patterns for these spaces that have the lines very spread apart and lines that are thinner instead of thicker. All right, I think my panda is all done. Oh my goodness, is he just the cutest. I love Zentangles, boys and girls. You can catch me doing Zentangles all the time. I love feeling relaxed as I do them. Now, if you're happy with your panda, you can leave them just as he is. If you want to color your bamboo, you can color your bamboo shoot. Now, if you would like, you did have the other half of your paper. So you could always go back to the beginning of our video, remember how to create a square by bending, not folding, but bending your paper, tracing the line and cutting to create a second panda. Or maybe this time you wanna draw your own picture. Maybe you wanna draw a picture of a pineapple and then Zentangle in the pineapple. I can't wait to see the amazing Zentangle pieces of artwork or adorable panda colorings, whatever you decide is best for you. And I'll see you next time at the heart of a Viking. HOV artists, don't forget to hop on over to Art Sonia to upload a photograph of your piece of artwork to your art portfolio. I can't wait to see it. In case you were wondering, I did not find any giant pandas while I was running earlier today. It's unfortunate, I know, but if I ever see one, you'll be the first to know.